Hey fellow backyard boyers, Nick here. So today I'm going to show you guys how to build something that's not bow related, but it's something that I've gotten into this summer. I've really gotten into catching crayfish. And so I started off catching them with my hands and then I bought a just a commercial trap from the store. And then I started researching and figuring out what made a good crayfish trap and I started building some based on designs that are on the internet. And I'll put a link below to some of the sites that really helped me out. And I've come up with a couple of designs, I've been testing them out, and this trap has been my best trap so far. It's nice and compact, it's really light, and it's cheap. I believe everything that went into this cost about four to five dollars and it's a good trap it's one of my most productive ones so today I'm going to show you guys how to build one so the first thing you're going to need your materials the main body of the trap is made of hardware cloth or hardware mesh and this is a half an inch mesh now this is plastic you can use the steel mesh or the vinyl covered steel mesh. Uh, either, pretty much any one of those will work. I like the plastic because it's really inexpensive. I noticed that sometimes the hardware cloth, the uh, metal cloth, the welds aren't that secure and they tend to pop off. I've been able to abuse these traps. They get smashed and squished and hung up on rocks and they come out fine even though they're made of what looks like a pretty flimsy plastic and they hold up pretty well so that's what I'm using I started off with a roll that is three feet wide and then I cut off a strip that is 28 and a half inches long or around there what I actually do with this mesh is I like to measure things based on the number of squares on this grid and they're not exactly half an inch so for the length of this I like to cut it at 57 squares and that gives you roughly 28 and a half inches so once you've got this this will make your entire trap it'll make the main body of the trap the door both the cones, the uh, anti-escape devices, and you'll also have enough material in here to build a bait box. This is just something that you can put your bait inside and it'll help it last a lot longer because the crayfish can't just eat it all and you know destroy it too quickly. So some other things you're going to need. You're going to need something to cut if you're using the plastic, just any pair of scissors will work. I like these small ones, it gives me better control. If you're cutting the metal wire, you're going to need some kind of metal snips. You're going to need some kind of twine or cord for actually wrapping this whole thing together. This whole trap is actually held together with just simple stitching. This holds up really well, I found that it doesn't get cut and this is just a I believe a nylon string you could use any color you want mason twine would work for this too and then you're going to need a rubber band or some more twine just to keep things closed and you may also need to make a hook but I'll show you guys some options you have when we get there So the first thing you're going to need to do is take your length of mesh and you want to fold it in half so that you have your three foot length or three foot width becomes two 16 inch widths. So what's going to happen is, like I said, you can see how it's not entirely consistent. But you just want to fold this in half as best you can. And 
And then you're going to want to cut this in half. What I like to do is when I'm cutting, you can see how there's this peak right here. I like to go on one side and very cleanly cut just on one side of this ridge. So that's going to give me one rough side, as you can see, that's a good angle, just one rough side and one smooth side. So the smooth side will become the main body of the trap. The other side we'll use for all the other pieces like the cone and the door. So I'm going to go ahead and cut this in half and I'll show you what that looks like. Now that you've cut both of these, you'll notice that the ends have this sort of thick border or thick ribbon of plastic. I like to just take my scissors and cut following this sort of line that you can see just to kind of thin it out so that it's about the same thickness as the rest of the mesh. That way we don't have to really worry about this border and we don't have to cut it off. So it helps us save on material. So I'm going to go ahead and cut that off on both of these. Alright, now that you've cut the border off, you want to actually cut a rough square out of the main body of the trap. So when we put the trap together, this is going to be the main opening for the trap. This is where you'll put everything in, take everything out, and we'll be covering it with a door. So this is roughly six and a half by six and a half inches. So that's going to be 13 by 13 of these squares. You can see I have the cutout here. So you just measure 13 squares in, two squares down, and then you make a 13 by 13 square cutout. And that's that. So now that we've got this cut out, we'll go on to cutting out the other pieces. The next thing we're going to work on are the cones. This trap is basically composed of a cylindrical body, which we've just finished, and then it has two cones. The cones allow the crayfish to crawl in, they fall into the trap, but they can't really crawl out and into and back through the entrance, especially with these inner rings. So I like making deep cones on mine. A lot of the commercial traps have more shallow cones and it's easy for crayfish to climb back out once there's no longer bait in the trap. These hold them in a lot better. So to figure out how to make your cones, all you really need to know is the diameter of your trap. This particular trap that we're building has a, nine, is a, has a diameter of 9 inches. And so when you make your cone, you need to make a half circle that has a radius of 9 inches and a diameter of 18 inches. So you can just draw this out on a piece of cardboard or poster board. You're also going to need to draw another half circle in here and cut this out. This will be the inner hole and this should be, this should have a diameter of five inches, a radius of two and a half. That way once we close this up and we connect it together, because there is going to be a little bit of an overlap here, the diameter of our hole is only going to be two inches and that's a good size. To do that, we're going to take the other side of our screen, of our uh, hardware cloth, and you want to just lay this down and cut it out. And then you want to take this, flip it over on the other side, and then as close as you can to your first half circle, you want to cut your second out. 
That way you have a lot of extra room on this side to cut the, the trap door from, or the door of the trap from. So I'm going to go ahead, cut that out, and I'll show you what that looks like. So here are the two completed half circles that will become our cones. Cut two of them. And after cutting those, I have some scrap. This larger piece of scrap we'll use to cut the, the door for the trap. And then out of this scrap, we'll be cutting most of the bait box. We're also going to need to use this larger piece for the, the pieces that will help prevent escapes. And wherever we have extras, we'll need to finish up our bait box. So as far as the cone goes, when we put this together, we have our half circle here with our smaller half circle. We're going to be overlapping them like this. You can see we have a nice cone. So we're going to put these on the side. And next, we're going to be cutting out our door and our other pieces.